Okay, so I'm going to show how you can solve this non-homogeneous linear recurrence relation. And I'm going to use pretty much the same technique that I used in the last few videos, where I'll first look at this associated differential equation. And so if, if you haven't watched those videos first, I recommend that you watch them first to get the idea. But um, essentially what we have is... Um, n, when we're looking at the recurrence relation, n kind of plays the role in the solution and in these, um, in these um, non-homogeneous input functions, n kind of plays the role that t plays in the differential equations. But then, at the same time, n um, kind of takes a role of like the derivative order. And so the idea with this method is that we can just say we're interested in this recurrence relation, but just forget about it for a second, just look at this differential equation, then what we can do is, given this, um, this uh, definition here for y, we can differentiate both sides of this equation n times, evaluate at zero, and then we can choose a clever way of defining f of n in terms of y, and then what we can do is we can look at the solution to this differential equation, and and from there we can just differentiate that n times evaluated at zero and figure out what the solution to this thing is. Um, again, it's the same process I used in the last couple of videos, so I recommend watching those first. Um, okay, so this differential equation, if you were going to solve this, the first thing that comes to mind would probably be the method of undetermined coefficients. That's one where, you know what the um, well, you'd use a superposition property too. You know what the homogeneous solution to this is. And then you just make a guess for the particular solution. And the guess would just be a constant multiplied by this exponential function. And then you figure out what that constant is. And then you've got your solution. You just add the, the uh, homogeneous solution to the particular solution. And so you might wonder, since these types of things are so related, these types of equations, why couldn't you just use the method of undetermined coefficients to solve the recurrence relation because um, method of undetermined coefficients actually has nothing to do with differentiation or with differential equations. It's just a glorified guess. Um, and the answer is you, you can use that to solve this and that's actually just as with the differential equation that's going to be the easiest way to solve this thing. And so at the end of the video I'll show how you do that. But um, what I want to do is I want to reduce this problem to this problem, not because um, we know how to solve this with an undetermined coefficients and then go back, we could just easily go back to here and say what the solution is, but the reason is because we have other uh, theory and stuff built up. If, you if you've taken a differential equations class, um, you, have a lot of, you should have a lot of theory built up about this type of equation. And you should have better understanding and and reasons for why this why the solution of this thing is what it is besides just the guess method. And so, um, aside from using the method of undetermined coefficients for this differential equation, to, just to remind you, and um, I'll be brief here because I'm not. Uh, this isn't a differential equations video. Um, one way you could solve it is you could reduce this to a first order non-homogeneous equation. And the way you do that is you use the, you kind of do this thing where you factor this differential equation over here. You factor the left hand side and it's not really factoring but you can use these kind of modified differential operators and then you can make a substitution variable. It's a lot of fun. I just did it for this one, just um, to refresh, and it's actually a pretty good process. It'll give you a pretty good intuition of of where the um, why the solution is what it is. Uh, besides just using the the guess method, the undetermined coefficients, you could also use an annihilator, which is again using those um, differential operators. You can use an annihilator. Um, operator, which is a, a differential operator, apply it to both sides, and what you can do is, oops, you can eat, you can increase the order of this differential equation to a third order, 
and the I d the only point in doing that is that it becomes non-homogeneous and you have better um, techniques or your your techniques are less dependent on guesses for doing non-homogeneous so you can avoid undetermined coefficients that way so you can either reduce to a first order which I recommend doing it's a lot of fun or you can increase to a third order where it's non-homogeneous then of course you can use the Laplace transform which is also a pretty cool way to do it um, point is there's a lot of techniques to solve this differential equation aside from just the method of undetermined coefficients so um, it'll it'll be cool if I can uh, show that the solution to this follows as a result of the solution to this differential equation because then everything will be much more justified than just using like some guess method okay so here so I'm just starting with this differential equation the which I'm calling star that kind of star um, so the idea is if you take this thing and you differentiate both sides n times so on the left you get this is the n plus 2 derivative of y here this is the n derivative of y on the right hand side it's pretty simple what happens um, each time you differentiate an n comes down out of this this exponent and so you get this if you're uncomfortable with this type of thing going from here to here again this can be proved using induction but it's pretty straightforward especially in this case then what you do is you take both sides and you evaluate when t is equal to zero so here this just to remind you these types of things are kind of shorthand y is a function of t we're just plugging in t is equal to zero um, that's just so that we eliminate t from the question because we're interested in recurrence relations which don't involve uh, continuous variables then the cool little trick is you can just set f of n to be the nth derivative of y evaluated at zero and so you'll notice that this is just f of n plus two and this is just f of n and so as a result this definition of f of n gives you the recurrence relation so in other words, this differential equation, given this uh, definition here for fn, implies that the recurrence relation is also true. This star's recurrence relation, this one is a uh, differential equation. So then from here, we know the solution to this differential equation. Um, and again, there are a lot of ways to do it. Of course, the most efficient way in practice is to use method of undetermined coefficients, but you have better theory too, and you should have good understanding of why you get this solution. Uh, especially this one third, that's kind of a mysterious thing. Um, if you if you do that, that method that I was mentioning earlier, where you reduce this to a first order non-homogeneous equation, you'll see why. You'll see where this one third comes from. Um, you can also see it when you're doing the undetermined coefficients, but it's not as cool. Okay, so all we do is, so this is the solution to the differential equation. What we want to do is we want to differentiate both sides n times and evaluate at zero, because that'll tell us the solution to the recurrence relation. So if we take the nth derivative here, this is just a and e to the t thing so it doesn't change at all this one it, it's a oscillating one that it, uh, e to the minus t oscillates with a period of two when you differentiate it it's kind of cool so it just goes positive negative positive and over here you have an exponential function with a, a different uh, parameter up there and so this one the two comes down each time you differentiate and so you just get one third 2 to the n, e to the 2t. And so, if you evaluate this thing at 0, this equation, if you evaluate it at 0, that's just f of n, the solution to the recurrence relation. And so here, when you plug in zeros there, there, and there, you see that this is just a constant plus 
another constant that oscillates between negative and positive, and then this part here. This would be the particular solution, and this would be the homogeneous solution. So it's pretty cool. Everything can be reduced from uh, the differential equation. I also want to um, just show you for in practice, um, because that's more of like for understanding. In practice, the best way to solve this is just the same as the differential equation. You just reduce, or you just use method of undetermined coefficients. So this is the recurrence relation you have. And the idea is you can look at the characteristic equation you find the two values for lambda and then you can find the homogeneous solution really easily um, this is just you take these values you make those the basis of a couple exponential functions I've showed um, a lot of different methods for doing this I think I still have two different methods that I haven't shown yet for um, for ways that you can solve these equations. Total, I know I have, it's either six or seven different methods for solving these linear constant coefficient um, homogeneous recurrence relations. Um, all right, so this is the solution to the homogeneous equation. Then, using the superposition property, which I made a video about, all you have to do is then find the particular solution, because if you know the homogeneous solution and you know the particular solution, Assuming that this is the general solution, which it is, um, then all you have to do is add them together, and then you've got the solution. So the guess for the particular solution, this is, the, this is where the method of undetermined coefficients thing comes in. You guess that this is just going to be a constant times 2 to the n. Why? Well, that's because the input function is 2 to the n. There's kind of a flowchart kind of method for the guess here. But again, it is nothing more than a guess. That's why I showed the other uh, way that you can actually solve this and know what's going on. Um, but if you just make this guess, then you can just um, look at what the n plus 2 term would be, and then you can just plug it into the uh, recurrence relation. Get something like this. Oops. Then all you have to do is solve for a. And then you're done. This is the so now you know what the particular solution is. It's one third times two to the n. That's after solving for a in this equation. You also know what the homogeneous equation is. That's this right here. So all you have to do to find the general solution or the uh, solution to the non-homogeneous equation is you take these two things and you add them together. This was by the superposition property. This is this is the result you get.